Today, we're working with a linear actuator manufactured by Actuonics. I'm gonna keep this video to the basics of using a linear actuator and understanding the different types of linear actuators. If you have any comments or questions, post them below. It will help everyone out in this community. Here are the supplies that we'll be using. We have an Actuonics 100 millimeter linear actuator with position feedback. There are two main types of linear actuators, ones with position feedback and those without. Position feedback just means the position or length can be controlled and limited. If an actuator has five multicolored wires as an output, then it has position feedback. Otherwise, it'll just have red and black or red, black, and white wiring. The actuator that we're working with needs to be powered by 12 volts. So I have a 12 volt, five amp battery. Some actuators run off six volts, some run off 12 volts, and some run off 24 volts. So pay attention to the voltage requirements. Anyone new to actuators should know that there's a trade-off between the amount of force or weight that the actuator can push or pull and the speed at which the rod travels. This actuator has a gear ratio of 22 to one, which means it can travel about two inches per second if there's no weight it is pushing or pulling. Next up is the linear actuator control board, or LAC board. I'm gonna link a video that Actuonics produced that walks through the LAC board functions in the description of this video. But just so you know, this blue box controls the speed of the actuator, and these two blue boxes control the limits of the actuator. Your actuator will connect here, and then your RC receiver will connect right here. We'll need to cut the red positive line on the servo cable that connects the RC receiver to the LAC board. Otherwise, too much power will be supplied to the RC receiver. In addition to your RC receiver, you'll also need an RC transmitter. Now, this RC receiver has four channels. Channel one is for turning. Channel two is for burning. Remember that we cut the red positive line on the servo cable? That's because the battery that we're using to power the linear actuator is 12 volts and the RC receiver requires less voltage. So I have a two cell LiPo battery that will not only power the RC receiver, but also the motor via this ESC, which is an electronic speed controller. Now it's time to connect everything. Now that we've connected everything, we can take our RC transmitter and go ahead and turn that on. Next step, we can take our ESC and turn that on and that will provide power to the RC receiver. All right, now let's give it a test. Let's test the motor. It's important if you look on your RC transmitter to set the steering trim to zero and your steering duration to 10. I'll be using this setup to turn my son's Power Wheels car into a fully RC car. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, stick around for the next episode.